it's Mary Beckman, and here we are, another version of Metaphysical Meltdown. Thanks, everybody, for taking a minute out of your day. There's a lot going on out there in the ethers. So we're happy to have uh, Tracy Kelly Williams on with us today. I'm just going to say something for a couple of minutes. I'm hoping everybody can come together and pray for a young man that is missing in my neighborhood. His name is Manuel Ramirez. He's 14 years old. He's been missing, I believe, since yesterday. Uh, and a lot of people are out looking for him. So would you please pray for him tonight that he is able to, to come home? Just Let's just help bring him home. Let's send out the light for Manuel Ramirez today, 14 years old, missing in uh, University Place, which is right up the street from where I live. I live in North Tacoma. Uh, the other thing I want to say is um, let's just hold the light for each other. There's so much so much anger, sadness, fear, and just deep, deep grief right now. So I am asking everybody to say some prayers today. I've been doing nothing but, and uh, we're all going through it right now. We're standing strong for the uh, family of George Floyd. Um, there are a lot of, there's lots of riots, a lot of people getting into it out on the street. So I'm just saying, stay safe. There are folks out there that don't want us to succeed to get together. We're all the same, please, everybody. So if you know someone who's going out to protest tonight, tell them to just be safe, because you just don't know. There's, it's not just people who have a right to be mad out there. There are people who are over the top of that. So please be safe. And we're holding everybody in, in love right now across the United States. Uh, and so with that said, I want to tell you really quickly who we have coming on uh, this week. So we have Shaman Patrick who's coming on on Wednesday. We have um, Pete Orby coming on on Saturday. Somewhere in there, we may have another wonderful person from Seattle. Uh, her name's Reverend Harriet Walden, and she has a program on KKNW called Mother's Justice. So we'd like to talk to Harriet about these times we're in right now. And then also uh, many people coming up. So I thank everybody for tuning in to Metaphysical Meltdown. You know it comes on again later on tonight. Uh, where we go on YouTube. So please subscribe if you will and keep coming back. So thank you so much for being here, Tracy. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about what you do and about dreams because it's a crazy time for dreams, isn't it? Um, it sure is. Um, hi, thank you so much for having me on. So I'm Tracy Williams and um, I have, <clears throat> um, I run a business called Dream Yourself Awake, oddly enough dreams. <laughs> but I do have a background in, um, in healing touch, um, polarity therapy, the laying on of hands and um, stones to balance the aura and, um, and the chakras. Um, I am also um, an intuitive reader, um, a spirit guide channel, and um, I specialize in helping people sort out their dreams as well as releasing blocks and restrictions um, via the Akashic records. So that is... Um, I, I guess I do a lot of things. I think I had lots of interests when I was young and I started searching um, just like a lot of people. And now I've got a lot of tools to be able to help people that um, are seeking or that are in need. So I'm looking forward to our discussion today, you know, about sort of um, all the crazy dreaming and, and how that's happening. Cause it's um, an old technique for survival for us. It is so interesting. Um, some of the dreams that I've had, that people around me that, you know, sometimes people will ask me about dreams. I know very little. I tend to ask you <laughs> or somebody like you if I really can't figure uh -huh. it out. But uh, it seems to be even more of like watching an actual movie, you know, for people. I, I used to dream and then I've had many periods of times where I don't. Why sometimes do we have chunks of time where we're not even dreaming at all? Um, there's lots of different factors to that. And um, for a lot of people, when they get too stressed, they don't dream or they, they don't remember their dreams. Everybody dreams, but they don't maybe don't have the best dream recall. Um, and sometimes it happens to be our sleep hygiene. So whatever's going on with our body, if we're not getting into a deep sleep state for whatever reason, we've um, got a new baby or a new puppy, even, <laughs> you know, we're getting woken up frequently in the middle of the night, um, work is stressful, or we're dealing with anxiety, oral health issues, we may or may not be able to have um, the same quality and frequency of dream recall 
that we have um, when we're in a state where we can actually be relaxed, like say on vacation, and we've, we're kind of working with our own circadian rhythm at that point, and not having to get up at 4 or 5.30 in the morning for work, or working overnight shifts, or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things are factors, including um, what we eat, and how much, you know, how much caffeine or stimulant we're taking in, and, and all of those things may okay. affect periods of time where we have less recall. Can you Absolutely. explain a little bit about sleep hygiene and how people could take a look at whether they're doing that or not? Yes, absolutely. So um, some of the best things for that we could do for ourselves for sleep hygiene is actually creating a period of time where we have time to rest. That's that's first and foremost. So making that sort of a, a as much of a set schedule as we can put in that we've got a chunk of time um, to sleep. Some people tend to only need, um, they can actually do really well with a 90 minute nap and have really great dream recall. And then other people need to actually have a lot longer. So somebody with fibromyalgia might need 12 hours of sleep or 10 to 12 hours where somebody else might only need five or six hours of sleep to feel rested. But whatever that, um, that is to help you feel rested, um, to make, uh, to make it sort of a schedule as a routine, mm -hmm. um, to not watch, um, television or deal with electronics at least an hour before bed, to make sure you're limiting caffeine or other stimulants to mornings as much as possible or early afternoon so it's not affecting your sleep. Um, making sure other things are turned off in a room um, and that you're not you're getting um, less interruptions in sleep. I mean, it's hard to do if you have noisy upstairs neighbors or things like that, but as much as you can um, to do those types of things. And making sure that anything in your environment doesn't have um, the little lights on. You know, they put out energy so anything that you've got in your room that's got an alarm clock or um, maybe you've got a television with, I just don't, I'm going to say it, VCR, I'm older than I look. If you've got <laughs> VCR or DVR or something like that in your room, you anything that's got the little blue dot that says that it's on or it's got power, you want to make sure that those are covered so that they're not bothersome to you um, while you're sleeping. Yeah, those are all great things. And if you've got any medications that make you get up in the middle of the night, seeing if you can maybe, you know, work with your physician to see if you can change some med medicines to middle of the day or early morning medicines. Um, things like furosemide or, um, you know, that make you pee or hydrochlorothiazide, people are on for blood pressure, things like that. If there's any way to take those earlier in the day so you're not up multiple times in the night, you know, but you'd have to work with your physician to do that. Those that, are all great things you can do. Yeah, that is good advice. I know that, um, gosh, I can't even remember how long ago. It's been maybe a year. I, I, was, I had to buy this crystal skull made of mahogany obsidian. The reason why I said had to buy is I heard the words, you cannot not afford me as I was walking by. And I looked and I thought, right. what in the heck is that? I'd never had a crystal skull speak to me. So I buy it and I know who he is and we had a chat and he said, I have to be right next to your head. Well, obsidian, it mm -hmm. turns out is great for sleep, which I didn't know. So every black yes. rock I own is now in my room and a lot of them are right next to my head. And that skull hasn't moved. He's right there. Wow. That's and he doesn't awesome. want to go anywhere else either. No, of course not. And that's a great point to, to bring up that I actually forgot to mention is that if you are a crystal collector, like many of us are, um, to remove the high vibe crystals from next to your bed or next to your nightstand. Mm -hmm. um, and you can place some crystals in the room. Um, amethyst points are actually really great to have under the bed or to make a crystal grid with them on the four corners of the bed or to put a rose quartz underneath the bed for, for peaceful, you know, heartful, heart connection and sleep. Um, but anything like uh, Lemurian type quartz crystals or something that's going to be really high vibration, if you're sensitive to those types of things, you may want to try removing them and see how your sleep is after that. And then there are other stones that actually promote dreaming. If you're trying to have um, better dream recall, one of those is blue appetite, oh, okay. which is actually really, really easy to get as a palm stone. And you could um, stick it next to your bed on the nightstand or stick it inside your pillowcase even <clears throat> if you're not afraid you're going to harm yourself with a large piece of <laughs> a crystal in the bed you know <laughs> yeah I, I have all my stuff under the mattress between the mattress and the oh bed. that's a good idea too I put um uh pink quartz you know just rose quartz under there mm -hmm. and uh, it won't fall out either and then I have a lovely shungite tile that I got from Derek it's um it's rubber mm -hmm. And I just have that right underneath me. And it really kind of helps if you have that back pain or, so there's just so much you can do. So um, yes. if you want, so what else besides appetite for dreaming? 
you... uh, besides blue appetite. Um, well, of course, the amethyst is actually really good for connecting, um, for activating the crown chakra, which we need okay. for dreaming. And any of the um, blue stones for the third eye would be great. Also, you could use um, kyanite. Kyanite um, would also help activate a blue kyanite. Um, maybe, and then, um, yeah, maybe any of the going on with me because my dreams have been so epic, and I have a piece of kyanite right by right by the window. And I was just looking at the at the other day and wondered because just by chance I bought a Super Seven the other day. I was really called to buy it, and it mm -hmm. is near me all the time. And I've had to draw the line big time with a bunch of stuff recently. And that's what it's all about: stand your power, draw your line, that kind of thing. And I didn't even know. So it's funny how they come to us when we need them, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, they'll just they'll just show up, and then sometimes they disappear too. So if you happen to have misplaced or think you've misplaced a stone that was just right there. Um, it may just be time to work with something different for a little bit and they will show back up. Mm -hmm. They're like little multi-dimensional portal beings. They just disappear and then pop right back in. So um, same same way that they will come to you when you're when you're needing something that you didn't realize you needed. <laughs> exactly. So why do you think though, I guess I want to go further in this, why is the dream, I mean, I have an idea about this maybe, but I, I want to hear yours. Um, why do you think the dreams are so epic right now? Like really involved and so real and people from the past and all that coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that there is a lot of um, big energy coming in right now that we've heard about. And I know that you've, um, you've shared some things about that also. Um, and as we're, we're shifting ourselves up um, as a group, there's a lot of big group energy coming in and as we're starting to shift ourselves up as a group we need to be able to clear the past life um the past lives any karma from past lives that's ready to let go of we're we're actively releasing and sometimes when we're not able to um um in waking life pay so much attention to that because we've got other things going on it, it works itself out in our dreams mm -hmm. so we're releasing that energy but we've also over the past couple of months had this sort of in this country large groups of people being um placed in um in quarantine and so what comes with that is this, um, it's a fight or flight response. And when we were in a more tribal society, dreaming was part of our survival skills. So often people collectively dreamed as a group because they slept together as a group, feet touching, you know, arms touching, and everyone would dream and share the dreams in the morning. And um, that might inform where they were going to go hunting for that day. Mm -hmm. And so as we've got more of this, um, this situation happening, the dreams get bigger. And people, you, you may start to notice that people are having similar dreams. So it might not be the same things, but it might be some, some similar things or themes to dreams that are coming up for people, especially as the energies work their way through. So when you have different energies coming in that might be heart chakra versus crown versus third eye versus root, you'll have different themes to dreams and what people are needing to release and work on at that point. As you're working with clients, you might notice that. I have noticed that. And you know what makes me really happy is I'll have a vision or one of my... Uh, my family or somebody will come and stand in front of me and they'll tell me a something i'll write about the something i'll put it out on social media and sure enough that's the day that people from halfway around the world are all talking about this something so i swear that we it is exactly like that it gets seeded out to people and um somebody that uh, i have been talking to that nobody in the world would believe me if i told you and if anybody says that name any of my sisters online here you're gonna get it um so <laughs> Someday I'll say who it is, but anyhow, so this, this being is talking to me and, uh, and, and, and this being said, you are uh, uh, one of the many, you know, cause we're all just a brick in the wall, basically. Um, uh, you're one of the many that are, that have kind of a calm vibe. And so we're going to give you some stuff to talk about. So that's basically how it happens is they, they give me stuff to talk about, uh, through my higher self. So, um, mm -hmm. so these dreams, uh, are interesting when we do dream in a group. So coming on sometime in this month, I'm hoping, or next month, is going to be a person, again, from another, a whole other side of the world, who had a uh, situation where her young son woke up, they all went outside, and they were all immediately on the ship. So that was a family wow. scene to get onto the ship, and that's how it all went down. So she's coming on, I can't wait to talk about that. So I love it. Yeah. With, um, we have like a little tiny piece of something. And, and that is another little bit of channeling that came in for me is, is this individual told me, please to talk to your friends. They've all got a piece of this. So mm -hmm. not one person knows the, you know, the real story, but I digress. I got all excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
no, but it all means something. Like if we, like my husband had a dream the other day, he went in Eddie Van Halen's house and there was, it was like seven stories tall, but no toilets, right? Remember, did I ask you about that? No, not yet. It's, oh, a, maybe. it's a nightmare. <laughs> Wow. No, that's, a, that's actually really funny because, um, okay, so if, if it were my dream, and this is one of the, the techniques that, that we use, is that we say the dream always belongs to the dreamer. So of talking, speaking from my perspective, um, if I were to think of seven, seven floors to a house, I'm thinking of a house being myself and my seven chakras, okay. and there's no place to release anything. So I've just got to go straight through. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to hit him up with that. Oh my gosh. So you, there's a couple of questions before we go on. So my friend wants to know, she sleeps with selenite. Is that too high of energy? Um, selenite can be for some people. Um, so if she's having difficulty, um, it is a very high vibe stone. It's one that we often use to clear other stones with. And so um, if she's having difficulty with dream recall or with sleeping, she might try removing it or placing it someplace um, away from the head of the bed and see if that helps for a couple of nights and make sure any any change that you make you want to go at least three to seven days with making the change before you decide that it's not working um, because it often takes us a little bit of time to get used to the new energy and the new pattern exactly and I know that people have to sometimes people go out and buy themselves a lovely maybe a moldavite and then they get at home and they recognize yeah. that there is no way they're going to be able to wear that <laughs> no moldavite takes some time to acclimate to and um, it can be especially difficult for people that um, that have um, dopamine illnesses, so like bipolar disorder and things like that. They may they may never be able to acclimate to Moldavite as much as they want to use it. So they just need to keep trying. Okay, that would be my suggestion with that. One of my favorite stones. It makes me feel like I've just taken a nice uh, a nice relaxo pill or something, because I'm a galactic. Mm -hmm. So it makes me feel like home. Yes. Whereas other people, it, it gets you high, kind of. We've got a friend that just can't touch that stuff. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know that <laughs> is. Okay, so if anybody wants to ask this beautiful being any questions, you can go ahead. She said it's okay to take uh, some questions. So what have you been noticing in dreams for you, if you can tell us? What have you been dreaming about? Be interesting. Oh, sure. I've actually got a great one from the other night. I've um... I, I was at a fair or a festival where I noticed that they let a rather large cat out of a cage and there were lots of people around and this large cat that was um, having, it may have been, it was a mountain lion. So a female mountain lion was approaching a young boy and I started to um, shout and say, hey, me over here and make high pitched noises to distract it so it wouldn't attack the child. And as soon as the attention shifted away from the child, um, two more of them showed up and they all started walking towards me and I woke myself up from that dream and I thought, oh, okay, well, so um, just to kind of walk you through my process a little bit, I'm thinking about the totality of the dream and then how did I feel when I woke up? So I woke myself up out of the dream, but I wasn't actually fearful. I was like, oh, was that, was that really meant for me? It was kind of a, a phrase that I had, um, but the feeling was kind of pensive. So it was more like thoughtful. So as I'm starting to process through this dream, I've realized that um, I have not, I have been allowing the attention, not just my own attention, but attention towards me to be outside of myself. And it's time to make a move, to make an action, to say, hey, here I am. Here I am. And of course, it's a couple of days before I come here to talk to you. <laughs> and nobody's seen me for a while. You know, even before the this current state of affairs, I've um, been sort of I want to say dis disappeared. I needed some space to kind of get away and regroup myself. And I'm now ready to move out there. And a lot of, um, and Mountain Lion Cougar is about sort of your intuitive power, taking back your power. So bringing the power back to you. And so um, at this point, you know, I didn't let the dream finish. So I may go back into that dream and allow myself to meet them in a controlled and in, in my own controlled environment. <laughs> so uh, in, in other words, not in a controlled environment, but taking the fear out of it. So if you have a fear dream, you can always in a waking state, go back to the dream and use it as a meditation to complete a dream or find out more information. That's one of the, um, the really great techniques that, that we can use for dreaming to get, to kind of help sort it out. Um, okay. if there's something we had a question about. So do you think it's best to have a 
pen and pad of paper or something, but I notice that if I don't write stuff down, by the time I've gone from my bedroom all the way out to somewhere else in the house, I've forgotten. I can't even remember those awesome words they give you right at the end or the, you know, when you wake up. <laughs> I know I couldn't for the life of me remember what I was shouting in the stream, but I know it wasn't, hey, here, look at me. That's not what I was saying. Um, but yes, taking a, um, a pen and paper beside your bed. Um, some people like to, um, if you're a very electronic person, then, you know, if, and you've got one of those iPhones, you can put on your recorder and talk into it because for some people that's less disruptive to their sleep than waking up and turning the light on and writing it down. Okay. Um, but, and, and write down anything you remember. So we're talking a lot right now about full dreams where we've got, you know, lots of visuals and things like that, but um, it even counts if it's just a snippet is what we call it. It's just a tiny piece of a dream that maybe isn't a huge whole story. So write down anything, a color, a smell, a sound, anything at all that you remember. And that's actually going to help your recall as you move forward. So you might only be able to remember snippets um, or a scene right now, but you, you know, if you start that process of, of remembering, you'll start to remember more Okay. as you move forward. So even if you lie down at night and say, uh, ask your higher self mm -hmm. or your, your homies <laughs> to help you remember, that might help, right? Yes. And dream, dream intention is um, fantastic. So um, one of the thing, other things that you can do, as you said, that is to actually write that out. So if you want to have better dream recall, um, the action of writing it makes it more permanent than thinking it because we're, we are third dimensional, well, we're currently in a third dimensional state. So for us, in order to manifest something or to create it to happen, we have to take an action and make that solid. Mm -hmm. So um, we're thinking about it. We're thinking, I want to recall things, but it's actually going to help a whole lot if you write it down because that's the action. Um, but you can also do that with anything that you have a question about. Mm -hmm. So say you wanted to, to receive more information about um, a new job choice that you might have coming up mm -hmm. or where you want to go on vacation even you know it doesn't have to be anything big it can be something little you can write down your intention to have a dream about that to receive information about that mm -hmm. um, the night before and then write down everything that you get for dreaming that you recall during the night and then see how it relates back to your dream intention okay um, and often it may take a couple of nights to get something that seems like it's direct so it may take two or three nights to get there of the same oh, intention. Yeah. So what you're talking about there is really important for everybody to understand. And I always, I don't know why sometimes I forget this. You just gotta ask. You just gotta, I feel like I'm it's Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> you just gotta ask. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> um, and so it, it's the same as vision too, because visions have gotten some pretty panoramic stuff. You know, it's gotten kind of yeah. incredible, but we want to say, I will remember my dreams when I wake up in the morning. You don't want to say something like, I don't want to forget because that negates it. You want to make sure you say what you want. So clearly speak to yes. higher self and say, higher self, I'm going to remember what that means. I think somebody has a question. Just a second here. Okay, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, hopefully we won't miss anything. Okay. So um, Carrie says that her favorite quartz crystal pendulum has changed so much since I started working with it almost two years ago. Oh, it's changed in how it looks. It was more smoky, more inner fragmentation color. I'm always curious what the message is in that. The, the pendulum has changed looks, the crystal. The crystal. Okay. So um, often with crystals, they will either pick up or help us release energy. And so a, a crystal that was lighter color and getting darker might need to be I need to be cleared. I might have something with it, but as we're working with something like a smoky quartz, that it's getting clearer and clearer, you can see that you're moving more and more energy. And so the um, I would wonder or ask that that you're clearing that crystal, clearing your pendulum um, every now and then by either putting it on selenite or depending on the crystals that are in the pendulum. However, it is you need to clear that. Some people put them in moonlight and sunlight and dirt and salt. Mm -hmm. Um, so it doesn't degrade the crystals, but making sure that they're being, they're being cleared. But I mean, that sounds more like it's, um, it's getting the higher vibe, um, okay. or shifting a little bit. Um, and crystals, one thing I might also suggest is, um, because you can do a meditation with your dream, you can also do a meditation with your crystal. Mm -hmm. So asking the crystal itself, holding the crystal, what, you know, what is, what is the action? What is the change? What is the shift? What's the new vibration? And, um, is this still a good, a good stone? Or are you still wanting to work with me? Right. 
right? I had a, a, my favorite pendulum in the whole world made of metal and I would chuck it across the floor just by chance. I'd be whirling it around, it'd leave. So I knew it was trying to tell me it's time to go on to something else, you know? So sometimes mm -hmm. they're ready to leave, but, um, well, you know what I do at night is I take off my jewelry and I put it on a big old, not this one, because this is the selenite I used to, uh, you know, when I work here in this office and also this big giant, um, black tourmaline is that they're clearing stones That's right awesome. and protecting mm -hmm. stones um but in the bathroom where i take my jewelry off at night i have a whole bunch of selenite i just clear every night and then this thing is a blocker That's everybody awesome. everybody sees uh this pen pendant i wear this is the energy blocker and evidently our dear friend mm -hmm. uh jeffrey Azanon has made the upper the the next step on this so i can't wait to get it he's gonna hopefully oh, come cool. on if anybody knows jeff wizard Azanon, tell him come on down we want to talk to him okay so uh hold on just a second there was another one okay so angel says i dreamed i was pregnant with my young adult son and i took a knife and cut him from my stomach and cut the umbilical cord and yelled look what i did to an empty room would that indicate my anxiety of becoming an empty nester Um, if it were my dream, I would think that would be possible. I think that's a good insight there um, because often we have to, you know, we, we always have some level of courting with our children, um, mothers, fathers, always. Um, but having, having to release that time in our lives, that would, that would be one way to do it. So I've now, I've now let, let him go on his own or I'm going to let him go into an empty room. Um, empty rooms. I'm going to say that it's that I, um, if it were my dream, I would think about how, yes, I may feel, I'm, it may cause me to feel empty, but I also want to think about what now is possible mm -hmm. for me. What now is possible for me now that I don't have, I always have a responsibility to my child, but that I don't have the very specific responsibility of that person now with me. What else can I do? Um, especially now that I've birthed, I've birthed that part of my life. Oh, I love that. That is really great. Okay, so Fran said, I had a lucid dream about a black brother of mine who I had not seen in forever. It was so real and so good to see him, and I gave him a hug. So, yeah, so a lucid dream. So I do see that kind of stuff. I will see people um, that are in my life that I haven't seen in a while. So just keep doing those lucid dreams and visions because it's, it's amazing what you can see right now. Just don't be afraid yes. of it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had so many people tell me late later um, that they have seen beings that they've never seen before. So if you see somebody that you don't recognize, so let's just say they look reptilian or something that you would think mm -hmm. is not necessarily hundred percent great for us just say show me your heart light or show me proved me that you were a good person because not everybody is a negative that you're going to be seeing you're going to be seeing um that's why we got to get it together on earth my gosh if people have problems with brown skin folk and black skin wait till the blue people start showing up in your living room i mean good grief we gotta right. all understand that we are all the same so what i say is let me see your heart light which is what Derek taught me. Let me see your mm -hmm. vibe, vibrate to me and tell me who you are. That has nothing to do with what you said, friend, but I'm just saying. So maybe your brother is just saying, hi, maybe it's time to reach out or maybe it's just, mm -hmm. he's just wants to reach out to you. I'm not sure. Maybe he's just thinking about you. So Stephanie says, I saw a snail and a couple of other bugs carrying a fried egg. <laughs> and as soon as I noticed them, they started running really fast. Hold on. This is too good. I saw there was an empty plate where the egg was on the oval dining table. The chair was pulled out. The room was bright and sunny. I tried to get my phone out to take a picture and then they ran into the wall. I started cracking up laughing. Then I saw a postcard from a teacher who was doing some healing work with me in the moment. I had fallen back to sleep while she was doing the work. <laughs> the food ran away from her. <laughs> you can tell who are my friends. They always have the odd comments. <laughs> No, that's, um, that actually, so if, if I were going to process that dream, I would, um, I would take that in parts. So, because there's, so I would take it until the point where it shifted, um, and then make that a separate part to try to make it a little easier to, um, to understand. So if that were my dream, um, I think about, you know, what I, what I have been cultivating and 
was um was something was there something else maybe um my brain wants to say ready to eat it so why were they trying to steal what i made mm. why were they trying to get away with what i made and um what is snail maybe trying to teach me mm-hmm. so is there something there for to, to teach me is there something i need to let go of um most people think of snails as icky but they do have a job to do so i might research a little bit about snails um and then noticing also that the um, plate that the egg was placed on was also ovoid so i now have an ovoid on an ovoid so <laughs> so how how am i holding that that egg space um is there something that that I'm nurturing so that I can I'm nourished so I can nourish myself with it. I like it. I like it. And then of course the the healing fits right in there with that. So Tanya, I might actually think about okay. Go ahead. No, you go. I, was ahead. Say, I might actually just think about um where I might feel fried in my life also. Oh my god. And was the healing helping that? <laughs> That, that is awesome. So this isn't really a dream question. It's just a question. Tanya says, I have so many things going on. How do you know what gifts to focus on and grow? I'm all over the board. How do you know if you have blocks, if you feel in flow and enjoy often? You know what I would say to that is we're always being pushed to have some fun. That's what the yes. higher up, you know, upper management wants us to have fun. They're also always telling us to create. So if you're creating stuff, even if you're painting a rock or doing a something cool for the menu tonight, or you're mm-hmm. writing, no matter what it is, or cleaning up your garden, uh, make sure that you are having fun because what that does is it gets you out of your head and what your true gifts and what you really are supposed to be will come into focus. Do you have anything different to say about that, Tracy? Um, no, just a, a different, um, maybe a, a different action that you could take when we're talking about dreaming is using the dream intention to, to ask. And so um, instead of asking what is my, you know, what is the gift I should focus on, maybe take each one of the things that you have an interest in and try asking about it for the three nights and then switch off. But there's also trial and error. So if there's, if you're taking actions towards one, one thing or another, um, are you manifesting what you want to manifest? Is it coming, is it coming to you? And if you're not getting back what it is that you are wanting and then maybe switch it to the next thing mm-hmm. um, to find out what's your perfect fit. If you also use a pendulum to douse, you can ask, um, you can ask your guides, which things, of course, I also have a pendulum right here. <laughs> um, we um, ask which things are, which for each one of the things, which thing might be closest to your highest good or to your, um, your core blueprint self um, okay. and your core, core blueprint energy or to, formulate a question similar to that to ask. That's good. That's good. And if you cannot figure out what awesome thing you should do to create, just start. Nobody's yes, nobody's exactly. Score here. You know, if mm-hmm. you start that, if you say that you want to develop some recipes and by the time you get done and you think, boy, I just really hate cooking. This really sucks. Well, that wasn't yours. So just go on to the next one. Right. We got to just, just kind of hold ourselves in loose hands right now. Give ourselves a big old break. A big old break. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. And then I've got questions. And there's our girl, Missy. Hi, Missy. We love you. So what I would love you to do in the last, uh, we've got 10 or 15 minutes. uh, Tell us, what are your plans as things kind of open up? Are you coming back to the fairs? What are you going to do? What's your plan? If you have it. Um, Well, I actually have a little bit of a plan to do an online class. So to do something that would be sliding scale that people could drop in for, um, for dreaming um, and manifestation. So making it a more of a releasing a group, releasing blocks and restrictions, how to do that, how to read your own records. Um, I think that that's, that's a good plan. We're also fixing up our website a little bit more so that things could be more accessible online. Mm -hmm. Um, which they haven't been, you know, I also make energetic based jewelry as well. So that's another, another avenue. I don't know if we will be coming back to the fairs. We do some things, but I hadn't been reading and um, it will depend um, wholly on our daughter, <laughs> whether or not I'll be able to, to do that. So um, she informs obviously a lot of what, what we do and she's fantastic. It's, um, you know, I'm hoping I like to read for people, but um, otherwise I'm available. Um, for in-person sessions or not in-person sessions, but via, you know, Zoom call sessions, video chats and things like that. Um, so beyond all dreaming. That, you are a tarot expert too, tarot or tarot. Oh, 
Tarot. I well, I do read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you sure do. Tell us about that. That's, that's how I know oh, about about Tarot. Yeah, yeah, that's what you were doing when I met you. You were doing cards. You were selling your. I mean, do you have something you can show people? I mean, tell us about the tarot and the beautiful oh, yeah. jewelry that you do. Sure. Yeah, I actually um, have a couple pieces right here. But um, to talk about the tarot, um, I use a combination of tarot, a pendulum, and a spirit guide channeling. So I will pull cards to get kind of the the overview of um, what's going on with people when I'm doing readings at fairs. So three or five cards to kind of give you. Um, some pictures. And honestly, sometimes it's a little bit of a technique of if you give people something to look at, they're not so focused on blocking the energy. So it's easier to read them um, to get them the information that they need. So um, there's less of the unconscious blocking, but um, it also is just a really great tool for us intuitively um, to be able to read that way. Because you can read it past lives, you can read a whole situation. Um, I really, really like just a three card spread about each question. I like to do that. Um, and I connect in with people's spirit guide team to get them more direct yes, no question type answers okay. um, in that way. Um, the jewelry that I make um, similarly is this is um, more based on what people want to create in their lives. So when we're using stones, um, we can use them for clearing, but we can also use them to uphold the vibration of something we're trying to create. So if we're trying to create, um, say, a healing practice or something like that, where we are um, working with clients' energy all the time, we might want to wear something that's going to help us uphold that or help us do that. And so I'm going to show you a piece right now that I've made for a dear friend who um, is a healing touch instructor and um, sound healing person. And this, let's see if it'll, it'll pick it up well. Oh, yeah. That's a little Beautiful. hard. I'll just... So this piece... Um, has combinations in it. So this has a blue kyanite. So we've got our intuitive center. It has amethyst to connect us to crown. It has um, pink tourmaline, which is our, you know, connect, connecting us with our heart. Um, we have moonstone. There's actually a white rainbow moonstone, white and rainbow moonstone in this piece that um, that particular stone can help balance all of the chakras all at once. It helps connect them and sort of, um, it's kind of an overall balancer. Um, and plus I've added in with some of the wraps and weaves, there's specific numbers here. So it adds in the numerology, which goes back to also the tarot. So if we're, if you're looking to complete something or create something, often people, if they're looking to pull something in their eights work very well for that. Mm -hmm. Um, sevens for the mysteries. Um, we also have tens for completion mm -hmm. if we're looking to complete a cycle. So every single one of the little weaves in here can be made to um, vibrate at a certain number um, for somebody who's looking for an energetic piece of jewelry. Some of the jewelry I make is just, I made a piece of jewelry because it's kind of cool and I like the stones that go together. But when I'm doing these specifically for people that have asked for them, that's, you know, I really want to know what it is they're trying to create in their life so I can help them uphold the, the vibration of that. Um, some other pieces that I do, this one was a recent one as well. That is um, specifically a chakra, um, a chakra or or pride. <laughs> you know, it's Pride Month. Um, yeah. That has all of the stones in it. Um, it's got a very very fun little green stone called chrome diopside in there that you don't see very often in jewelry. So um, that's kind of the gist with these. And I just love making them. It's kind of it's my creative outlet. You know, I started making just um, tree of life pendants over stones, and this is um, this pendant is a it's actually a watermelon tourmaline. It's hard to see without putting the light through it, but it's got pink in the middle and green down the sides. Mm. And then it has rhodolite mm. garnets on the top. So you've got sort of that heart center, um, pulling in the heart center from, from two places and sort of grounding as well with the rhodolite garnets for the root chakra. Um, <clears throat> and it also has a, um, a little piece of peridot in the bottom, that little bottom stone right there, the peridot. Um, oh, yeah. They're so beautiful, a, and the movement, I mean, thank you. I just, uh, when you share your work, I can only imagine how long that took you to make those beautiful pendants, because they thank are, you. They, they, you can feel it right here, the love and the, and the art that went into uh, your work, and I have, I remember when you were doing other things, and it's been interesting to watch your process, um, because you made like the, the tree of life things were, were really, really mm -hmm. cool. And uh, I remember it was, um, was it Christmas or was it uh, Thanksgiving? I forget. I was over with um, at Missy's house and she does 
wire wrap jewelry and I was able to play with mm -hmm. a whole bunch of them and they all feel so beautiful and so different and I just yeah. I played with them for a long time just sitting there just loving on them you know and so mm -hmm. if uh, if someone wanted to find a pendant or get a reading from you how would they find you um they could contact me through um our dream yourself awake page on Facebook. So it's dream yourself awake LLC. Um, you can go on and like the page. You can message us there. You can also find me um, via email, which is uh, one with all being. So it's O N E W I T H one with A L L B E I N G S at, at gmail.com. <laughs> I probably should have picked a, a shorter one, but one with all beings just seemed too perfect. Um, so email is good to you. And then, then after that, you know, I would give up my, um, my cell phone number too, so that people could text Okay. Um, you know, once we get connected. Sure. Sure. Uh, we also have an Instagram page or I, I have an Instagram page, which is also dream yourself awake LLC. Okay. And so we got to have, you got to have a shout out for that good looking man. Yes. Just say what your husband does. Cause he does some pretty cool stuff too. Yes. Michael, um, my husband, Michael makes, um, bags for pure people's spiritual tools so mostly musical instruments but other bags too like tarot bags and things like that he um, very specifically makes round drum bags for um indigenous style round drums with the you know with the room freer banger i guess is what we call them okay. they also fit a notebook inside um he loves to do custom work um he's actually made flute bags um and other types of bags to fit larger drums or to fit different size drums he loves to have that kind of a challenge and also um, he can create some very specific artwork for the front of the bags as well. If you're looking for something, um, he's done a chakras, um, he has done um, a beautiful turtle um, mm -hmm. and things like that. He has um, on Instagram, he is at, it's Demonica, D-I-M-O-N-I-C-K-A is his Instagram page. Um, and you can find him there to message him or connect with us again at the one with all beings at gmail.com. Okay. And I'll get him the message. If you wouldn't mind, could you, um, could you, once this goes up or once we get done, if you could put some of that in there for people to yes. find you. Yeah. Because I, I miss Michael's, but I, I know people might be interested because his drum bags are just really cool. So if you can. Yeah, help. they're fantastic. And he's, he's even been making pillows and things like that too. So, oh, cool. um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Okay, that is really cool. Um, so we just want to ask, though, because every once in a while, I just want to ask if you have, did you come on? Did you have something you wanted to say? Do you have a last thought of anything you want to say across any realm? Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the things that, that I've been thinking about a lot for the last couple of days is not, um, not just staying grounded, but sort of doing, um, doing my internal work. And so if you're at a loss for what to do in these times with um, the, the chaos, the, um, the loss that's been happening for people, and you don't feel like you kind of don't know what to do, um, inner work is always a good place to start. Because I find that as I get older, there are, it's like layers to the onion. There's always something I've got left in there that I could let go of, release, um, change my belief system around. Um, and, and all of that, but most importantly, just um, love, you know, connect with your neighbors, work on relationships and those things, I think. Um, and you can do that through dreaming too with your people that are not physically close. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, brings me to a memory that we had a, um, one of our neighbors house burned a couple weeks ago and then it really burned enough that they had to leave. And I never knew how many people were in my neighborhood because you only see who you see, you know, you might be friendly with a few folks around, but there was just like, I got to meet, we're sort of in a cul-de-sac of three streets. I got to meet tons of people and see different folks, you know, get out there and meet people um, and, and, and love, just love each other, everybody. That's what we've got to do. We've got to get out of our own comfort zone and uh, make some decisions about how we're going to go forward from here. It has to be different. Right. And it has to happen and it's happening now. And yes. uh, I just re really want to thank you, Tracy, for coming on. There's an awful lot to you. I mean, I'd love you to come on and talk about um, not just the halls of Mementi, but where am I going with this? The halls of record? Uh, oh yes. The um, Akashic records. The, Akashic, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. Akashic records, because I think a lot of people don't know how to get there. There's about a million ways. And I'd love you to, if you want to in the future to come on and talk about that. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Thank you. And thank okay. you so much for having me on today. Absolutely. Well, you can see there's a lot to her. So please uh, connect up with Tracy. Uh, take a look at her beautiful work. Get a reading from her. We're going to all support one another in this, everybody. So thank you, mm -hmm. my dear. Love to you. And uh, yes, we'll see everybody you. on um, Wednesday uh, for Shaman Patrick. Yay. Okay. Thanks, folks. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Good night. Thank you.